Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello and welcome to this episode of our show. This is your host, Keith Doherty. Today, our special guest is top real estate agent T.A. Vasquez of Keller Williams Realty based out of Amarillo, Texas. T.A. has been in real estate since 2008 with the first three and a half years working in the administrative sector. Since venturing out on his own in 2012, he has accomplished capper status with Keller Williams Realty, which means getting to keep 100% of his commission. And his top agent magazine recognition has put the cherry on top as far as his career goes. All right. With all that said, T.A., welcome to the show. Uh, Yes, Keith. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak with you and your listeners. Yeah, and uh, we appreciate you taking the time. And and I guess, T.A., if you could start for our listeners, what led you into real estate? Was it something that you always knew you wanted to do, or did you maybe stumble into it? Well, it's kind of a combination of both. Um, From a very early age, I want to say like about five or six, um, my aunt worked for Southwestern Bell. Her and my her and my uncle worked for Southwestern Bell, Bell here in Amarillo, and they were really the first family members of mine that I had noticed. Uh, oh, uh, that their that their lifestyle was really really nice um, above what I had grown up when I, grown up in. Although mine was very um, you know medium income, and I could tell theirs was a little bit higher and. There was a new subdivision here in, in Amarillo at the time, and I just remember being very, very um, uh, in, interested in the uh, nicer home, and more specifically the master bathroom and master bedroom and the bar area. And I just I knew I had a knack for it, but I never never really followed up on it until I was basically fo- kind of forced into it. Um, my mother had. Uh, had been diagnosed with cancer in 2004, um, and I was currently, I was at the time I was working for a lawyer. Um, I had always had it held administrative positions in the past and had never really even contemplated. And commission, commission jobs scared me like you would not believe. So um, after she had got diagnosed, I didn't really work. I held odd jobs at Abuelo's restaurant, and it was right by my mom's house where I could leave and check on her. And uh, I, in 2008, my, uh, I got informed from a previous supervisor of a telecom company. I'm sure you heard of the Enron WorldCom scandal. Yeah, back yep, in, absolutely. Back in the 90s. Well, I was employed by WorldCom, and uh, it hit everything. I lost all my stock options and everything back in 2001. And a, a, supervi- a previous supervisor of mine had gone into real estate, him and his wife, and he happened to tell me about a, a part-time receptionist position that was open up, opening up at the uh, Keller Williams here in Amarillo. And uh, he said, you ought to go apply for it. It's 12, it's 12 to 6, I think. He goes, it's not a lot of hours. It's uh, about 30 hours a week. So I went in, got the job, and I worked there and at Abuelo's restaurant. And, I, and my mom passed June 10th. I started Keller Williams May 1st, and I lasted about two weeks at Abuelo's. And, from then on, I just, you know, started to hold open houses, worked in the uh, part-time receptionist uh, position, and one of the uh, owners of Keller Williams, one of the founding owners, uh, Carol Wittenberg, had noticed she had, had seemed impressed with my work ethic and um, my loyalty, which I'm b- very huge on. And so she offered me uh, her assistant position in the morning. And that was kind of my first taste of what it was like getting paid commission because I only got paid. When she closed the sale, I got a certain percentage of that closing, and I started to, to see how it all worked, and I started to learn how to try to budget, budget my money. And I lasted. I did that for about two and a half to three years. In 2012 um, or 2011, Carol had asked me to get licensed so I could do things for her while she was out of town and showing houses, and she said, oh, you're still going to get paid a salary, what I pay you, and bonuses here and there. And the more I got into it and doing open houses every single Sunday for five years, um, I just, she said, I think you're ready to go out on your own. 
And uh, the, our broker, David Grimes, uh, had really played an instrumental part in helping me decide to go out on my own. And I went out on my own in 2012, and I, I unbelievably well exceeded my expectations on what I was – I was prepared. I, I doubled my income the first year. And so um, I was very astonished. It's hard work. It's twenty four seven, but um, it's my passion, and I, I love it. And I wouldn't trade it for anything else in the world. Excellent. Well, we're sorry to hear about your mom, and, and uh, but it's it's kind of nice that uh, you know the the situation kind of you know helped you through it, I guess. And it kind of you know you almost kind of raised up right through you know becoming an agent. It's kind of great. That it really speaks volumes for Kelly Williams of how they they kind of took you in and and kind of you know brought you oh. up through. Oh yeah, they were unbelievable. There was um, there were different owners. There's two owners who I'm really fond of. Cindy Cunningham, she helps. She was one of the founding starters. Beth Carter, Carol Wittenberg, and then the broker David Grimes. I mean, that, well, the whole office of agents were just. They didn't even know me, but about a month and uh, and my boss, my um, administrative boss, Robin Treadway. They were just unbelievable and. Uh, they just helped me basically put my life together and put it back together. And it's like my, I got a weird feeling because it was very strange. My mother didn't pass until I guess she knew that I was – I felt like she knew that I was situated, I was going to be where I was going to be, and she knew I would be okay. I just – the only thing I regret is her not being able to see it happen for herself with me knowing that she's actually watching, if you know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, T.A., can you talk a little bit about um, what personal attributes, traits, or qualities you think have most contributed to the success that you've had in real estate? Oh, yes, and bar none, that would be putting the clients, whether it be sellers or buyers, their needs first. And if that involves having to reduce your commission, take a cut, zero, sometimes it's been zero, it's putting their needs first, and um, I was just raised to where money's not the most important thing. And um, I, in turn, you know, God has blessed me very well in this business. Um, but it, it's about taking care of people, um, whether it's wh whatever age demographic it, it is. It's just realizing what's going on in their life and help them try to get situated as best as you can. And it helps that I, you know, I was born and raised here, but, you know, I've met a lot of new clients. But it's putting people before things, I guess, if you will. Excellent. And do you think you'd give our listeners a, an example of when these traits have played a role in your path toward success? Oh, uh, well, oh, let's see. Well, there was a, there was a high-end listing um, in a subdivision known as the Greenway here in Amarillo. Um, it was well, it was my second one. But anyway, they came and they met me at an open house, and I listed their home. Well, due to circumstances that was not – that, you know, I could tell they were having a hard time because they wanted out of that house that they were in, and they wanted to move to a house with a pool. Well, they did – I don't force people to work with me. There's a, a form that the that realtors are supposed to use that binds buyers to work with you. And it's called a buyer's rep agreement. Well, I don't, I don't do that. I mean, I, I don't believe in forcing people to work with me. But anyway, um, they had, they had asked me before, prior to asking me to represent them in the purchase of another home that had a pool. The finances um, were, they had to ask me to take a commission reduction. And the standard commission, I think it's nationwide, is six percent, six percent, or three percent to the buying agent and three percent to the selling agent. And I said, well, if I sell it myself, then I'll only do it for five. Well, I didn't sell it myself, and they asked me if I would go down to two. So I took a 2% on that, and um, I, the other agent put her client's needs first, and she was able to take a 2%. And um, it wasn't as much as I was prepared for that type of listing, and so I just dealt with it. Well, it, then in, in turn – they referred me an even higher end listing that was about a four hundred and fifty thousand four hundred four four hundred and sixty thousand dollar house. And from then, you know, I offer to if I if things need to be done money wise because that's huge. Realtors make a lot of money, a lot of money if they work at it, and it's a it's a twenty four seven job. But they 
it's a lot of money that you can make in this business, and I just feel that it's right to try to give back or help when, you know, I've been as, as blessed as I've been in this business. So everything that I've done for people um, it has been returned to me tenfold in the, in the commission area of this business. But it really, I can sleep well at night knowing that I uh, did the right thing and I did not force the house on somebody and it, w it was a commission and that's all I care about and they're not happy in the house. No, absolutely. And I, and I think what you said there kind of resonates with our listeners because, uh, you know, we've done over a hundred interviews, uh, on this, this show and, and the, the primary, you know, the predominant response, uh, or at least what we're seeing from the most successful, you know, real estate agents like yourself is to, you know, put the, put the customer first. And I think this really goes for saying, you know, whether it's real estate or any business, I think if you, uh, don't focus on the, the end goal, the commission, the money, if you really focus on providing value, you focus on the needs of your client and you really, you know, genuinely want to help them and, and get them and serve them and get them to their end goal, that the money, whether it's a commission or if you're outside of real estate, it's something else. The money's going to come because of your nature to actually want to truly help others and get them to where they want to be. Oh, yes, exactly. And I mean, and I mean, and I know other people who make a lot of money too, and it's all about the material and the cars and and I've made it, but there's a big void left if you don't find a way to to pay it forward or, or give back or help when you know that somebody needs help. And um, so, you know, or else I probably wouldn't be doing this because money can only make you happy for so long. And that's just the way I think I got that from my mom. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, absolutely. And and Tia, obviously, you talked about some of your, uh, you know, adversities, some of the trials you had on, you know, kind of as you were transitioning over. Can you talk a little bit about maybe, you know, after you actually made the transition to, to full-time real estate, maybe some of the adversities or trials that you had to overcome in order to achieve your goals as you, you know, moved into being a full-time agent? Uh, yes, that you have to. I had to overcome the reality of the of that, that, that this is one of the most cutthroat businesses that you can ever acquire. And my, I was very naive going into this. I thought everybody was friends and everyone was happy for each other and everybody wanted to help you and do this. And for the most part, at Keller Williams, that's very true. true. The culture is just very, uh, it's very unique and they are there for you as a family, but they're also there to make money. But, um, learning to know that it's a business more so than anything else, and that includes all the other brokerage firms. I had to overcome uh, learning not to disclose, talk about all my deals, talk about this, talk about that client and what's going on, and I'm getting this listing, and this is what it's sold for. And Because I was very excited to be in this. I just didn't know how it worked um, until I had things happen to me. Um, whether that be, you know, a, a lot of it happens during the option period when you're trying to negotiate repairs or people are trying to get a house that you know is worth more than what they're settling for. So, um, you know, it's been, it's been all of that, just coming to the realization that this is a very, very tough business. And I can say I'm very proud of myself because Ten years ago, I would never have been able to make it in this business. Excellent. And TA, what you know, what kept you going when you hit these obstacles? Obviously, you know, you ran into them. You, you know, you probably maybe get a little frustrated. You know, what what kept you going? Why didn't you give up? Uh, probably a lot of that had to do with uh, with Carol Wittenberg. You know, who has been my mentor. She's one of the owners. She was just very steadfast in saying, you know, she loves me like she calls me her real estate child. And as she just, you know, I just watched her and she said, now, I was like you when I first started. <laughs> she said, I went home and cried about the way that this business can be. And my husband said, <laughs> he just basically told me, you know, it's the business. You need to go go out there and run it. And she has become an owner, of, or she is an owner of Keller Williams. And it, this is a, a city of about 240000 maybe now. And 10 years, or it, it was launched in 2001 by three women of a West Texas uh, cattle oil ranching town, which Amarillo is known for. And they, and that was back when real estate was practiced 
the old boys way. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So anyway, they just made it, and she told me about some of her adversities and how she overcame it, and she just, the end result is making sure the client's happy and that you got them into a great house or you sold them you sold them a house, and really um, a lot of it is saying, oh, my gosh, I can't believe how lucky I am because I've had to help some clients that are in really bad circumstances in their life, and, I mean, really bad. And uh, and so, uh, you know, that's what helps me go through, get through all of it is to uh, realize they need, they need somebody, and sometimes more than just a realtor. I think in this business you need a degree in law and psychology <laughs> because um, it involves a lot of different emotions, and you have to be strong, and I inherited that from my mom too, I guess. Yeah, it's interesting. We've talked to other people, and they've said, you know, something similar where, you know, some days they feel like they're a counselor, and other days, they're, you know, they're they're giving advice on, you know, housing prices and, and then contracts. Uh, it's, like, it's like you have to wear many hats, and, and I think a lot of times people don't realize everything that an agent does uh, before they're even getting paid, you know that's the huge thing. You know, as you know, as an agent, I mean, you're you're, you're doing all the stuff up front, and there's, sometimes you may not get paid. I mean, you uh, know, exactly. it's, it's, it's that's awesome. happened before. To, that's happened before to me too. You know, people can lie; they can lie like I've never seen. And uh, I had one listing that just really suckered me in good, and it got the house sold, but they did not have the money to. They were. They said they weren't going to have the money to pay. They were going to have to cancel the sale. So we got the sale closed, and um, I just didn't take. It. I I didn't get a commission cut or whatever. And that was very hard because they didn't tell me the real circumstances, what was going on prior to listing the home, and so that was really hard to deal with. Um, but in the next turn, I was blessed probably twice as much. So. And, uh, T.A., I guess kind of looking forward, what do you see as your vision for your business and your career so over the next five years? Over the next five to ten years, I would kind of like to start diversifying into into uh, investment properties, rental properties, um, growing. I'm in the top – I'm usually in the top 20 percent of realtors here in Amarillo. Um, I'm, not in, I'm not the number one realtor, but I'm in the top 20 percent, and uh, I'd like to see myself get into the – 10% in the next five to 10 years and just start eventually slowing down and not competing for everything and just kind of start trying to enjoy a little bit of a residual income and uh, travel with my best friend who uh, lives in LA and go back and forth between there and Miami. Excellent. And I guess kind of on top of that, um, what do you feel is the best way that you market yourself as a real estate professional so that you can have continual growth? Well, um, a really, um, a lot of that has become from, you know, Facebook and word of mouth and a television show that I had uh, invested in and uh, here in Emerald, a local television show, and just constantly keeping yourself out there, doing an open house every single Sunday, and just me getting out and meeting the public and being available when they need you. Because my clients, whenever they need me, I'm there, and sometimes that's 24-7. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think we kind of mentioned a little bit uh, earlier about sometimes people's general perception of agents um, is different because they don't fully understand everything that you do, all the value and, and everything you bring to the table. So what do you think the biggest misconception or myth people actually have about working with a real estate agent? Um, that they make, um, that, that driving the nice cars, and making the high commissions come at just showing a house, and that's it. <laughs> and that's how you get all that. Um, a lot of it is very misunderstood as far as, you know, what you have to do to get to that commission point, and then what happens to the money after you get the commission. Because a lot of my clients have thought that I get the full 3%, and that's just not the way it works in the real world. Um, so a lot, a lot of that has been uh, misconstrued. 
Excellent. And let's say you get a call from a family member or a friend, and they're in another state, and they basically want to sell their home. And mm -hmm. uh, obviously, with Keller Williams and the vast network you have, you could easily look up an agent, do a referral. But from a general advice standpoint, what advice would you give that person about selecting an agent that could best serve their needs? Kind of how you make sure you take care of your people. What would you tell them to look for in selecting an agent? Um, loyalty, trustworthiness and their tenure in the business. Now, if it were a family member, I, no matter where they live, like I have an aunt that lives in Fort Worth, and um, I will, I will, or I represented my cousin. She uh, bought a, I think it was a half a million dollar house in Georgetown. Well, she did not have to call me uh, to help her. She could have chosen someone down there, but uh, she wanted me involved in it, and um, I went, I, you know, I went there, looked at the property, and um, I contributed half of my commission went to their closing cost, and I really did not have to do hardly anything except type the contract, and, and really that's it, and there weren't really a lot of repair negotiations, but um, if it's family member, I generally, they generally want me involved somehow, and that's even when I've tried to refer out, but if referral is uh, a possibility, then I always make sure that I kind of find the agent for them and fill them out because I know how people are and what their needs are and how they can be met. So I usually find the agent for them. Excellent. And, T.A., obviously you're uh, you know based out of the uh, Amarillo, Texas area. So if somebody's looking for real estate services or an agent in that general area, what's the best way they can find out more information about you and how you can help them? Oh, the best way is uh, via cell phone, uh, Keith, um, 806-570. 4418 or um, Facebook, you know, is the, probably the second best, and that's, you know, just Anthony Voskis, Keller Williams Amarello. Excellent. And uh, TAX, uh, we want to just obviously thank you for taking time out of your schedule to come here today and share your professional real estate experience with all of our listeners. And if you're listening and you want to learn more about TA and how we can help you, obviously you can uh, contact him via his phone, like you said. Also below this interview, we'll have a, a link to, to uh, his site. Uh, as well as any other contact information we have so that you can uh, get in contact with him and, and see if uh, if you guys would be a good fit to work together. So with all that said, everybody, until our next show, have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon. Uh, you too. Thanks, Keith. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.